This is Lisa from Mobile Tech Review, and look, I'm one of those backroom watch salespeople, aren't I? Now, this is going to be a smartwatch slash fitness band review. This is the new Fitbit Versa. From the name Versa, you might guess, universal, versatile. It's supposed to be man, woman, big person, small person friendly, and it is. I don't have very large wrists, even though I'm a fairly tall person, and this fits just fine. It's sort of reminiscent of the, uh, you know, the Apple Watch design, but it's one of the thinnest, it's one of the lightest, it's easy to wear, and that's a good thing because Fitbit is a fitness company, and pretty much they figure that you're going to be an active person, exercising, swimming. It's water resistant to 50 meters, so you can go swimming with it, and it does sleep tracking, better than average. We'll talk about that too. So it has to be comfortable. It has to be light if you're going to wear it like that. So that's pretty neat as well. It's $199, which is not too bad as these sort of products go in terms of pricing. Certainly it's a bargain compared to an Apple Watch. On par with Android Wear, maybe even a little bit cheaper than some of those as well. And given that it's woman friendly, it has a feature which includes, okay, cover your ears. You, you guys are a little bit squeaky. It has period tracking, ovulation. So if you're partner is trying to decide when it might be best for her to get pregnant or when she's going to feel most risky. It does that as well. We're going to look at it now. So two first off very pleasant things about the Fitbit Versa that's going to be available soon worldwide. Number one, it has four day battery life. So among sort of like smartwatch products, that's considered pretty monumental. The Apple Watch, most Android Wear watches are pretty much you charge them every night kind of products. Now fitness bands granted do have longer battery life. So you're looking at somewhere in between in terms of battery life. But given the fact that this has some smart features and it has apps and stuff like that, that's pretty darn good. The 199 gets you the watch with the silicone band and the charging base which is a nice little charging base right here. It does, terminates any USB connector. The USB charger that plugs into the wall is not, however, included. So you're going to have to use your smartphones, or you can plug this into your, your Mac or your PC, Windows PC, to charge it as well every four days or so. In terms of thinness, lightness, and comfort, I have these bony wrists, right? And it is one of the most comfortable that I've ever worn. It's the first one that I really have felt comfortable sleeping in. The Samsung Gear Fit 2, that one's not too bad because this kind of curvy fitness band style is pretty comfy. But for something that actually looks sort of like a watch, it's really nice feeling. And the silicone bands, I find them fairly comfortable, not irritating. They should be hypoallergenic. There's a variety of bands you can choose from which are affordable compared to Apple Watch bands. And price not, not unlike some Android Wear bands. You can get Horween leather, that's about 60 bucks. The silicone bands are about $30. And you can get the metal link bands for around 100 bucks. And then there's the metal mesh, sort of like Apple's Milanese, and that's $80. So there's a selection of bands. It works with iOS and Android, so that's nice for those of you who are using an iPhone but you're not into the Apple Watch for whatever reason or you want something even more fitness centered, it's nice that this is an alternative. Now it is not a smartwatch as much as it's a fitness band. So you get notifications piped to the watch. They're basically text-based. It's not so fancy like the CNN app with the pictures and all that sort of thing that you're going to see with your Android Wear, even with your Samsung Tizen gear products with, with the Apple Watch, that sort of thing. And when it comes to messaging with Android, you can send your choice of five canned replies to text messages, but not at all with the iPhone. And they say that's because iOS is a bit more locked down as to who has access to the notification subsystem on it. There's about 500 apps or so, they say, on the store. And there's some that, you know, that are pretty popular. You've got E-Trade, you've got Pandora and Deezer for music, for example. You've got Starbucks. It's not going to be as many apps as you're going to find, again, with something like the Apple Watch. But I do wonder with watches, I mean, how many of you are app junkies out there? Pretty much you just want to get your notifications without having to take your watch out of your pocket. And you probably want to track your fitness. It's probably what a lot of people are doing. So still, though, if you're looking for that wealth of apps and very granular like interactive apps on the watch that's not what it's about what it is about is fitness though and the heart rate monitor on this continuous heart rate monitor is fantastic i've i've reviewed i don't know how many different smart watches and fitness oriented products and the ones that are kind of smart watchy first really usually flunk on several different kinds of exercises they're good for running they're good for cycling the rowing machine, for example, uh, it's the gym now. The uh, Nautilus machines and the weightlifting at the gym now, they usually just kind of lose it and they become inaccurate. And yeah, I've given up with that. With the Fitbit, it is spot on and it doesn't start showing you spinning little, I'm still trying to figure it out. It doesn't show you crazy numbers. 
it works. The other thing is the sleep tracking. Not only is it pretty granular, where it gives you an estimate of your light sleep, your deep sleep, your REM sleep, and your awake time, but it auto senses it, just as it can do with exercise that you're going to sleep. It's pretty accurate about that. And it seems, as far as I can tell, to be the most granular and the most accurate about how well I'm actually sleeping. It's pretty neat. Once you start using it, you're kind of wondering, well, how do I do, how did I do today? Because I feel better today, or I feel crappy this morning. Did I not sleep well? You know, you get the idea. So as a fitness product, there's a lot to like. They support 15 different exercise types. Uh, now the Apple Watch funny thing lists a couple of more kinds. Like for example, it lists that rower, even though it is going to flunk on keeping track of your heart rate probably with that. But uh, you've got the core ones here. You've got swimming, you've got running, you've got biking. You get the idea. You've got uh, workouts, weightlifting workouts, yoga, that sort of thing. But you're just going to have to choose the general workout type for some of these if the one specifically you're interested in is not available. It can track your run and your biking, you know, uh, in terms of mapping and, and all that sort of thing, but there's no GPS in the watch. You're going to have to use your phone. However, you can listen to music using the watch without your phone. So that part is cool because it can store up to 300 tracks, which is not an unusual feature these days. And you have to use Bluetooth headphones or a Bluetooth speaker, probably headphones for most people, if you want to actually listen to that music. Now, here's the retro thing that's kind of like, you're kidding me. I couldn't believe this. If you want to transfer music to your smartwatch, what you usually do is you use combo Bluetooth and Wi-Fi on your smartphone and you send some playlists on over. No, we're going to download a Windows Store application or a Mac program, put it on your actual computer and transfer via Wi-Fi to the watch. So like, it kind of reminds me of using an iPod from, I don't know, 19... 99 or something like that. It just feels a little weird since everybody else is doing it with a smartphone and well, that is what it is. It, it does get the job done. It does work at least. It also does support Deezer and in the United States Pandora for those of you who are using Pandora's paid service. The watch itself has both Wi-Fi and Bluetooth and that is how it communicates obviously uh, with your smartphone where you're going to have the interface to see your historical workout data and all that sort of thing and how to talk to your PC. Now the application is pretty full featured and it's not unlike the application that you'll see for Samsung Gear products for example and Microsoft Band when it was still a thing. So you've got your, you can customize it, but you've got your sleep tracking, you can track what you, how much water you're drinking, you can track what you're eating, you can track your exercise types, you can see your heart rate, you can see your sleep information, it's all good stuff. And you can get emails and notifications, and you can choose which ones about how you're doing in terms of meeting your fitness goals, how you're, you know, all that kind of thing. And like I said, you can control it. The display itself is bright and easy to see in, uh, in bright sunlight. They say up to a thousand nits of brightness, and it sure looks like it. It's, it's easy to see. It's, it's one half inch display, and it's obviously square, and it's 300 pixels by 300 pixels, and it's sharp enough, it looks just fine. Uh, this guy, in terms of the interface, well, it starts with the fact there should be a little printed booklet inside that tells you more than how to charge it, you know. It should tell you what the three buttons do, for example. So, you know, when you first set up the app, it's going to help you along with that, but you, you're going to have to play with everything a little bit and see how it works. It's the usual swipe gesture-based stuff. So you swipe up to see your notifications, you swipe sideways to get to your apps, you tap on your app. A few of them actually use the touchscreen, so like there's a calculator app that you can download for it and some other things that are interactive in that respect too. So in terms of intuitiveness and navigation, it's okay. I think that really Samsung Gear products are still the most intuitive without, if you don't want to read the manual, you can just pick it up and start using it. I, the rest of them, they have something of a learning curve and this one joins them in that. Optionally, there's the $229, so it's $30 more deluxe edition of this, and basically you get a woven band with it and it supports Fitbit Pay because the world really needs another payment system. Not so much. Um, I leave, leave that up to you as to whether you want to use it or not. One thing that is cool about Fitbit, even if you don't want to use their Fitbit Pay system, is that they have a pretty strong community, and they say that really works. People really like it. It helps them to exercise. So you've got that, and you've got access to that portal and the community right on your smartphone app. So it keeps you motivated. They also have a couple of funny watch faces. You can choose watch faces. You're going to have to use your smartphone to do it, scroll through them, pick one, which one you want, and then send it to the watch. It's not that painful an experience, but you don't do it directly on the watch. But anyway, they even have one that motivates you to exercise and take steps. If you want to feed your virtual pet, you have to take steps so you can give them treats. It's kind of brilliant. It's kind of sad we need these kind of things to get our exercising done, but I guess we do, don't we?
So that's the Fitbit Versa as a fitness band. I like it a lot. It really does have a very excellent heart rate sensor on this. does better than the many products I've reviewed so far. And it has basic smartwatchy kind of features, but it's not really so much a stand-in for a smartwatch. So as you've probably gotten the idea by now, it really depends on what you're shopping for. If you're primarily looking for fitness features and you just want your notifications piped over to your wrist so you don't have to look at your watch or your phone all the time, then you're good. But if you want all the whole app experience, the ability to actually interact with apps and do more complex things on your watch, then probably this isn't the product for you. I'm Lisa from Mobile Tech Review. Be sure to subscribe to our YouTube channel for more cool tech videos and thumbs up if you like this vid.